As we start working with larger and larger neural networks to do genuine deep learning, the potential for overfitting increases dramatically. And so we need to spend some time thinking about what causes overfitting and how we can detect and avoid it. In general, overfitting is the problem of a machine learning model becoming too specific to its particular training set and not generalizing well to new data. The primary cause of overfitting is when a model has too much freedom in its parameters relative to the amount of data it trains on. And so models with a high degree of freedom, or with small training sets, are the most prone to overfitting. If we think about an example like polynomial regression, when we increase the degree of the polynomial, we have more free parameters to tune, and so the model can fit the training data more precisely. But that would be a bad thing if it comes at the cost of less ability to generalize to examples outside the training set. In the context of neural networks, our parameters are the weights and biases. And so as our neural networks get bigger and have more and more weights, they will have more and more freedom to choose their parameters. So whenever we're training a large neural network, we want to be on the lookout for potential overfitting. And the number one way to identify overfitting is by keeping an eye on the validation set. This is the primary reason why we tend to split our data set three ways into training, validation, and testing sets, so that while holding out a test set for later, we can, during training, look at the validation set to assess whether the network can generalize or whether it's overfit to the training data. The sorts of symptoms we're looking for are when the loss or the accuracy gets out of line between the training set and the validation set. Most of the time, over the course of our epochs of training, our loss on the training set will be decreasing. If we ever see the training set loss start to increase, that's definitely a sign of a problem, but that doesn't happen very often if we've chosen a reasonable model and hyperparameters. But if we're also observing the loss on the validation set, we hope to see the validation set loss decreasing roughly in line with the training set loss, though it may sometimes lag behind slightly. But if we reach a point where the loss on the validation set starts to increase, while the training set loss is still decreasing, that's a very strong sign that the network is overfitting to the training set. Similarly, if we're working on a classification problem, we can look at the accuracy of the model on both the training and validation sets. And once again, if we start to see the results on the validation set diverge, that's a sign that we're overfitting. So whenever you're training a neural network, you should be keeping an eye on the loss and or the accuracy on both the training set and the validation set so that you can identify if the network is overfitting. But if we think that our network might be overfitting, what sorts of things can we do about it? Well, our first two options are to address the causes of overfitting directly. Overfitting is more likely if we don't have enough data, and so the first thing we might think to do is go find more data to train on. And this is exactly why, if you read about some of the big recent successes in deep learning, you'll see that those models were trained on enormous sets of data. Things like all of the text that could be crawled from the web, or all of the video from thousands of self-driving cars or all of the histories from millions of games of Go or chess. But unfortunately, when we're training our own neural networks, we may not have access to data or compute at that kind of scale. And so there may be some things we can do to take advantage of additional data. And we'll talk in the future about techniques like data augmentation or transfer learning that can help with this. But we will also sometimes need to think about combating the 
other cause of too much parameter freedom. In particular, if we are training a very large neural network on a not very large data set, we shouldn't expect good results. And if we can't scale up the data set, we should think about scaling down the model. In addition to combating overfitting, reducing the size of our network can also pay huge dividends in terms of efficiency. And so if we are compute limited, it's important not to pick too big of a network. And so the general rule of thumb is that you should choose the neural network architecture that's just big enough to solve your particular problem. But supposing we've picked what we think is a reasonable size of model and a reasonable amount of data, and we're still worried about overfitting, what else can we do? Well, the first idea should be an obvious one based on how we could detect overfitting, which is that if we notice a separation between the training and validation sets, at that point we should just stop training. And this is a thing that we can write code to do automatically. We can detect if the loss or the accuracy on the validation set has stopped improving and cut off training even if we haven't reached the maximum number of epochs. But there are also more advanced techniques we can use, and to motivate dropout and regularization, it helps to think about what's going on in a neural network when it overfits. Well, we know that overfitting means that a model is becoming overly specific to its particular sample of training data. And in a neural network, that means that our weights are becoming overly specific, and that individual points are having too big of an effect on the network's activations. And so one potential solution would be to directly combat this by getting rid of particular parts of a data point or particular nodes in the network to prevent them from having an outsized effect. And this leads us to the idea of dropout, where we will randomly zero out some of the activations in the network during the training. The idea is that if we have a large number of activations and we're worried that they are getting too specific, then when we're training on some particular data point, we can just drop out a few of the neurons and that forces the functions learned by subsequent layers of the network to not rely on those neurons always being active. We accomplish this by setting some dropout probability And when we do a forward pass to compute activations on a batch, for any layers where we are performing dropout, each entry in the batch of activations has a probability p of being set to zero. That zero activation means that the node will contribute nothing to the weighted sums of inputs at the next layer, and so it's as though, for that particular data point, the neuron was dropped from the network. Then when we perform backpropagation, for any cases where the node had its activation zeroed, it will also have no contribution to the deltas, and so our gradient descent update will not be affected by neurons that were dropped out. In general, when we're making predictions after training is complete, we want to use all of the neurons available to make the best possible predictions. And so if we're not doing dropout when we're testing, then the weighted sums of inputs will generally be larger, and so we need to make an adjustment to account for this. And so for any layer where we were doing dropout, we should adjust the weights down by a 1 minus p factor to compensate for the fact that there will now be more neurons contributing to the weighted sum of inputs at the next layer. The final method I want to talk about for combating overfitting is weight regularization. And this comes back to the notion that overfitting means the weights are getting overly specific, 
And the idea is that we can discourage weights that depend too much on particular inputs by discouraging the weights from becoming too large. And we do that by changing the loss function that we use to train the network. Specifically, we will add a new term to the loss function that serves as a penalty discouraging large weights. One example of this would be a quadratic penalty term, which is the sum of the squares of all of the weights. This quadratic penalty, where we sum up the square of every weight, is also known as L2 regularization. And so, if we want to incorporate L2 regularization into our training, then we need to add it to our existing loss function. And so we get a new loss function that is a weighted sum of our original loss and our L2 regularization. This gives us a hyperparameter lambda, which controls how much emphasis do we put on the regularization portion of the loss versus the cross-entropy or other standard training loss. And we can augment our computational graph to include the L2 regularization. And so now the loss of this network combines the categorical cross entropy and the L2 regularization terms. And when we compute derivatives, the weights will contribute to the loss, both through their usual contribution to the cross entropy and through the derivative of this L2 regularization. And so that means that the training can increase the weights if it decreases the training loss enough, but it can't just increase the weights arbitrarily because that will increase the L2 penalty. So overall, regularization discourages large weights and therefore discourages weights that are overly specific to particular activations and can thus help to combat overfitting. Overall, the lessons here are to keep an eye out for overfitting whenever you're training a neural network, and to think about how big is your model and how much data do you have, and then also to consider techniques like early stopping, dropout, and regularization if you think that your training will be prone to overfitting anyway.